Welcome. Today we're going to talk about 10 traveling tips for packing carry-on luggage with children. That's the difficult part. I traveled for work for 10 years and learned early how to and how not to pack. When you are in a commercial airport every other week or so, you learn really fast. When our family of two became five, we found that it was even more important to have a good packing skill. So here's our top 10 tips for packing with children. Tip number one, wear comfortable yet bulky items for long plane rides. You know, it's a pretty standard tip. The layering comes in handy for those cool planes, number one. Pretty handy when I get to take my sweater and hand it to my child as a pillow. So we have that happen, I can't tell you how many times. Also some clothing items is, you know, when you carry an extra or a dress pair of shoes, of course use that additional space and fill it with any small item uh, that fits. You roll your undershirts and your t-shirts for additional space savings, etc. So um, all of your bulky items you wear, you roll your others and your extra pair of shoes, in the case of my husband's feet, um, you know, pack everything in those. So that's tip number two. Take Tide Pods or something similar, um, dryer sheets, etc., in your Ziploc baggage allowance. Regardless of how long you're gone, you know, we don't pack more than about five to seven days worth of clothes. So for our almost three weeks in Europe, we wash laundry twice. So fresh, so clean. So what we did was wash them with our detergent, use our dryer sheets, and then they were gone. So um, when we washed the laundry and then we didn't have to carry those home, so it freed up space in our carry-on luggage. You know, also some children do have sensitive skin, so if you're already used to the normal soap that uh, you take with you, rather than using the laundry soap uh, in a foreign country or at a location that uh, may not have the brand that you use, uh, it really can help reduce the impact of skin allergies and all of that when you just carry it with you in small quantities. Tip number three. Take clothing with you that you're willing to not bring home. I know a lot of times on vacation we want to take the cool new outfit and the brand new um, you know, shorts and t-shirt that grandma got the kids for the beach and definitely do that. But one of the tips that we have is, you know, there's always an activity that the kids want to do that they need play clothes for. Uh, they're going to get muddy. They're going to get dirty. Uh, you know, and rather than wash them and bring them home, we take an old play set of clothes and throw them in the trash. You know, if they're old anyway, and they're not going to be used or they're almost too small, and you know, it's not something that we can resell and nobody's gonna want their old play clothes. Uh, we have enough torn up rags at home, so we don't need to necessarily worry about tearing them up and using them for something else, though I like to do that at times. The best thing to do for us is to take them with us, let the kids do whatever activity we have planned with those play clothes, and then toss them. That frees up space in our luggage to bring home whatever the kids want. And it really, is um, kind of two birds with one stone. One, I get to clean out the kid's closet, and two, it uh, allows us to have that extra space. So tip number four. Take along extra Ziploc bags and some plastic sacks. They really come in handy. We use them to split and hold snacks on the road, so we can stop at a grocery um, like when we were in Europe, we would stop at Asda or Little and we would get cookies. Well, you know, if your kids are like mine, they can't pass them and share because number one, they'll be everywhere. And number two, um, she got more than I did. He got more than me. You know how it goes. 
So what we do is we can grocery shop on the road when we take extra plastic bags. And what we do with that is we divvy out three cookies in each bag, I pack them away, and then when it's snack time, the kids can grab their own Ziploc bag. Uh, sometimes I'll take a permanent marker so I can put their initials on them. And that way it's taken care of. And it's way cheaper than buying individually packaged snacks when we're gone. The plastic sacks come in handy for so many reasons. We use them as trash bags if we're driving in the car. We wrap shoes in the Walmart sacks or grocery sacks and that way the shoes don't get the rest of your clothes dirty. We also um, pack them as dirty laundry bags. That's another way that we use those. Tip number five. Our children are allowed one electronic while we're gone. And of course the associated charger. Gotta have that. Um, we usually limit to two games if, you know, depending on what they take with us. Uh, they do get another personal item or a toy as well. So for example, my youngest will uh, take his Kindle and then he typically brings Marshall. And if you have children, you should know who Marshall is, but Marshall is a Paw Patrol puppy. And so it is his stuffed animal. Uh, so he gets to carry those two things in his backpack. And then the rest of the backpack is left open for things that they want to buy on the road. So we do have a rule for their spending money. Whatever they buy has to fit in the backpack. So um, for example, we were at the Tower of London and they had a sword that we could not have carried home on the plane. I mean, it was humongous. And my youngest was really wanting this sword. And we said, um, no, because it has to fit in your backpack when we're traveling. So you cannot take the sword home. The best scenario for us is to allow room in their backpack and then whatever spending money, we don't usually restrict what they buy with their spending money. It's their money to buy whatever they want while we're on the road. But, you know, we do try and direct to some things. It just must fit in the backpack and the backpack has to fit under the seat in the airplane. So uh, we do kind of limit the size of the backpack that goes with us uh, for that very reason. Tip number six. Don't pack as much as you think you'll need. For reference, I really don't carry a whole lot of t-shirts um, for sleeping or otherwise because I like to buy t-shirts on the road. I know hard rock t-shirts are not cost effective, but I really like how thick the material is and then it is something that I can wear around the house or at home or to sleep in and it says some of the places that we've been. So I have Hard Rock t-shirts going back 20 years from, from a huge number of places. You should see my closet of Hard Rock shirts. So I restrict the packing for some of those items, even though I know that I'm gonna need an extra night shirt, I also know that I'm going to buy it on the road. So it just allows me that extra space because I know that I don't need to take mine from home, I'll get it on the road, and if I don't, my husband's always got an extra t-shirt in there that I can steal until we do laundry. Those aren't your clothes. Those are my clothes. I for a cruise one year and the kids were really small and we wore less than half of what we took. And I realized at that point that even though I have so many days, there are times that the kids are going to run around in swimsuits for three straight days. And so they're not going to wear clothes. And so I've really come to the realization that I don't need as much as I think I will. Tip number seven. Pack a suitcase that works for the way you travel. This is so important. And you know, I really hate to say this, but a suitcase purchase for me is a big deal. I look forever for a good suitcase. Um, I want it to have, you know, the four wheels that I can roll upright or pull it along or whatever I want to do. The inside is probably even more important. Uh, the hard-sided ones, I like those for certain things, but not as a general rule for my travel and, and the way that we pack. 
it seems like with the split in the middle and the two sides, it never, never packs as well as my other ones do where they have a big uh, and then just a top cover piece. Also, I like to have the shoe spots um, for flip flops and, and who knows whatever else I throw in there depending on the day that I'm packing. I really like those covers and so the other reason you know that I know they're not the coolest thing because everybody likes the hard side suitcases I really like the cloth ones because I can pack a whole lot more they push out they push up they expand and they're not fixed and hard where I have to zip it and it it has no room to move that hard shell um, I really like those uh, that can I can kind of push and squeeze and you know my shoe may be sticking out this side but it doesn't matter because it's cloth and it still fits in the overhead bin uh, that's the other big tip for me as to picking a suitcase it has to fit on a normal size plane um, you know we do plane side check but you know we spent three weeks in Europe and we took carry-on bags I don't have to worry about the airline destroying my bag, which really, really irritates me. Um, by the time I spend two months looking for a bag that I like because, you know, the suitcases have evolved to some of the things that don't fit the way that we travel. And so to find a bag that really works for me, that is the right size, the right dimensions, you know, I spent a lot of time looking. I also take into account cost because there are bags that, you know, I could spend $150, $200 on and I'm not doing it. I am not doing it. So we do usually limit to $50 or under. And so I always keep um, a thing out for suitcases. I know some women love purses and I do too. Don't get me wrong, love purses. I love suitcases more. We use them more. Tip number eight, car seats and strollers are free on most airlines. So if you don't want to carry them, you can check them when you get your tickets with your baggage and the agent will help with that process. We don't normally check those bags as I've discussed, but we found the gate attendant can add them plain side and that really works well for us. So we don't even have to go to baggage claim and retrieve them. Now, you do need to note, if you are traveling internationally, there are different requirements and regulations for car seats. So when we went to the UK, we did not take our car seats from the United States. Um, we actually purchased two booster seats in the UK to meet the UK safety regulations because we were renting a car and we wanted to make sure if we were in an accident, you know, the kids were covered and they were safe, um, as well as, you know, our insurance was going to cover correctly. So they were way cheaper um, than renting car seats for the entire week. I paid eight pounds for each of those car seats, which is 16 pounds. One day of renting one car seat was almost 10 pounds. That's a deal! So, you know, I purchased them. They, we traveled them to, uh, from London Stansted to Dublin because the, the regulations in Ireland are the same as in the UK. So we transferred them over to Dublin and used them there. And then I actually flew them home because, you know, we do go to Europe and I still have young ones that need car seats. Really, I think my daughter may always be in a car seat. But that's a whole nother story for height and weight. The store was two doors down from our hotel that I bought them at. And I ordered them online and just went in and picked them up. And it worked beautifully. It was, it was the absolute best thing that we could have done. But just know that if you are hauling a car seat internationally, really check the regulations and make sure that your United States car seat is valid in that other country. And if it's not, you may have to have some additional planning uh, to accomplish that. So the next one, tip number nine. We're almost there. To avoid a hangry, hangry child, snacks are a must, or they really are in our household. Um, probably because I have a lot of boys and they eat all the time. It never fails. Being in the middle of the line, they get hungry. Um, so we found that carrying non-perishable snacks that are individually wrapped really dramatically cuts our bad behavior. Um, you know, the, anything that's associated with the boredom 
and hunger, you know, we can stave off with a snack. And so we were in line. We came back from Europe and they had closed. We were in the UK and Ireland and we were coming back from Ireland when um, everything was closed for coronavirus. So that was in March last year. And we stood in line because they had to check individually every country that you were in. So instead of being through customs and it taking, you know, a couple hours, we were there almost six hours. Uh, thank, thank goodness that I had snacks for the kids. They did have their electronics and they, I can't tell you how many compliments I got on our children um, because even though they were very, you know, small, they were not throwing a fit, they were not upset, um, you know, they travel very well and we know that when they get hungry, we need to have a snack available. We need to have some, an activity for them to. It also really helps to have a snack for the plain descent and ascent because if they're chewing, it, they don't feel the pressure change in their ears as dramatically, so it does make for a smoother flight for them. So also something to think of that way. Now, one of the restrictions that you really, really, really have to be careful of is to check for meat and fruit products. So even though those are easy snacks if you're staying in the US, if you are traveling internationally, there are a lot of restrictions on what you can take snack wise if it's a fruit um, or a meat. So like for Canada, you cannot take oranges um, into Canada at all. And so, or bring them back as far as I know. I've never tried the bring them back part, but I know you can't take oranges. Um, we were going through the airport, uh, the, we grabbed the hotel snack bag breakfast and it had a banana in it. And I didn't even think to look at the airport at six, we went through the agriculture and we had bananas. And so could not take those. So the kids scarfed down a banana really quick. He let them eat them, you know. Uh, he just said before we walked into the next room, you know, they needed to be gone. And, and the kids ate their bananas and, and on we went. And it was fine. But just be aware, meat products, fruit products, you just really can't take them um, in most cases to another country. Ten. We've arrived. Don't sweat the small stuff. Besides your passport and medications, pretty much everything else can be replaced. Um, if you've got a car, you can stop at a grocery, you can stop at a Walmart-like store, even across the country. There are um, places that you can stop. The hotel will replace a lot of things for you. Toothbrush, toothpaste, razors, you know, all kinds of things like that. So, you know, don't sweat if you didn't pack something. You know, pack what you think most often you're gonna use. And, you know, pack for the probably, not the maybe, you know, and that will cut down your packing dramatically, especially when you're taking children. Um, you know, layering, of course, is, is the best way, and then you have a little bit of everything. But, again, just don't sweat it. You know, there are children's clothing stores all over the place. So, medications, passport, the rest of it, if you got it, you got it, and if you don't, you can buy it. Remember, your adventure is right around the corner. Music